paper, I guess. Group one, what did you guys come up with? Where's group one? Or a, a, a spokesman from yeah. group one. Uh, we all took one. Okay. Well, let's go to you guys one at a time. Well, I'll just go ahead and talk about active. Okay. <clears throat> active basically means it, it changes the state of whatever element you're targeting with the mouse when you actually push the button down. Okay. Do you have an example? Um, yeah, if you go to... Can you slack it out? Uh, sure. And everyone in group one, if you could just slack out all of your uh, links right now, just so I have them all at once. Ooh. So if you scroll down, all right. and you go to that little link, Active CSS, you uh, down the button. It turns <laughs> green. So it does. Cool, so yeah, this is active. When, uh, when you click on something, as while you're clicking on it, that is considered active. Uh, let's see, what else? Who had hover? So the hover is a series of class that hovers over the elements. Is it necessarily matches a CSS property from the other element that isn't necessarily active? So can you code that? Come on, thing. All right, and there it is. Wow, you made this just now? All right. Man. Rock on, Ed. Okay, and who has visited? Yeah. Jeremy. All right, so um, I collect that one out as well. Mm -hmm. um, visited is, I mean, this is like the first to go select you've ever seen when you're just getting to know the internet. Um, it's that one that turns something purple. But you can change it to do anything you want. So let's track any one of those. HTML reading list it is. And it's going to take me somewhere else. See, yes, it certainly is deeply embedded. Ah, here it is. All right. Oh, this is SCSS. All right. Cool. Wow. Yeah. This is SCSS indeed. I don't even know how to read that. Yeah. Cool. Now that's great. Okay. Thank you, Group One. How about Group Two? Who had disabled? I'm just going to go in order down my list here. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think I did. Okay, well, I'll leave that one open. And then, oh my gosh, no, I don't want to see your image. All due respect. So yeah, I can type in this one, but I cannot do anything with that one. And as soon as I change it from no longer being disabled, I can type stuff in it. Oh, now I can type stuff in it. There we go. Cool. Thank you. And then, uh, so Lon, you were you were focused. Who was checked? Did you slack something out? Yes, you did. Say what? Okay, so it does. There we go. Ooh, nice. Ooh, this is fancy. We weren't going to get to that until a little bit from now. Cool. Um, 
So uh, just to point something out, the way this label thing works, um, so label has this for attribute, and the way that works is it looks for an input with the ID of whatever is in that form attribute. So if this for is wombat, it's going to look for an element called wombat, and then when you click on the label, come on, there we go. When you click on the label, it checks that input for you. And so if this was, say, a text box, I'll wait for it to update, clicking on the label would select the text box. See what I'm saying? This is kind of a nice little thing. Cool. Thanks, Diana. Uh, and then lawn. Now we're at lawn, right? Yes. Uh, so this is the focus uh, selector. And it's pretty simple. It just means that you can style an element. Uh, uh, when it gets focused, which just means when it gets activated by the keyboard or mouse. Cool. I'm going to have fun with this box shadow. <laughs> right. There we go. Now, oh, come on. Be nice to me. Why do you not save? Oh, well, whatever. It was a lot cooler in my head. Okay, cool. Thank you, Lon. Uh, how about group three? Who had target? What do you got? Oh, cool. You did it. Awesome. All right. Yes. Wow. All right. So, so, so this kind of gives you a demonstration of all the CSS sliders. So, so if you look on either one, two, or three, mm -hmm. uh, you can see target. It, um, I think we can actually look at this just by itself. Let's see if this works. Yeah, here we go. And so now if I click on this, it takes me down to the one section. If I click on that, it takes me down to the two section, so on and so forth. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, group four, empty and not. A slight no. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, but they're tricky ones. All right. Care to share? Cool. So if I delete this one, then and wait for a second, then it is now considered empty, and so now it's selected, and you can do stuff to it. And then, how about not? Cool. Yeah, you can actually do a lot with not. So, like, let's say here, I'll put some content back in here, and then I'll give, I'll put something in here too, put something in here too, and then I'll give this second paragraph a class of, well, bagel, why not? And then in here, I'll say p not bagel, and this is going to select every paragraph that does not have the class of bagel. And there it is. Cool. Uh, group five, you guys got all the of types. Yeah, just like that. All right. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. 
think this is easy, unless I just totally don't get it. So um, I have three keys. The first to type affects the first key, um, and type two affects the second and last, so type affects the third. Mm -hmm. So what does what does only of type do? It affects like if there's only one div, it doesn't have any siblings or something like that, which mm -hmm. I can't really entirely explain why it's useful, but I'm sure it is something. Yeah, I mean trying to think. Like I can't really think of any situations out of the top top of my head either. But they're there. Mm -hmm. I mean if I wanted to select this span, for instance, I could do span only of type and it would select this span. So I got that going for me. Cool. Um, and yeah, so it's just like an uh, nth child, which we'll get to next, except it just selects things by type. Um, so let's get to the, the children. Who had the childs? Joe and Nathan. John, is your full name Jonathan? Uh, just John. Just John? Okay. Uh, Oh, I think it's just because it's background white. Let me give this like outline of five pixels of solid red or something. There we go. Um, either way, it's this only child. Cool. Uh, let's see. And then the last types and last childs. Yeah, gosh. from the bottom, so in the, the far left side, we have a parameter tree, so it's like the third from the bottom. Mm -hmm. The next one in the middle is very cool, I think. So what happens is that it's, um, you have the number three, you basically have eight elements here, and then what it does is I go one by one, let's say number one, it multiplies by three, and then, which in this case is one by three is three plus one. So not only it selects the first one, but also the fourth one. So now it goes to the number two. You know, um, it will be uh, seven because two multiplied by three is six, and plus one is seven. So I just like that. It's two order. Yeah. And the next one is also it says the even, which just selects the those on those ones that are even. Cool. Thank you. And I want to talk about this just for one more second. Bear with me. Um, so with this thing, um, if you want to figure out like what this selects, so your first step is to write out the numbers one through I don't know however many you want. Let's just do we'll do six for now. And let's say I want to figure out um, minus n plus four. Okay. So then what you do is, and I'm trying to figure out which elements this is selected. So I just write out one through six, and then I'm gonna start by plugging these numbers in. So I'm gonna plug one in for n here, so that's minus one plus four, which is, all 
right. How about number, how about this one? Minus two plus four is? Two. Yeah, okay, and minus three plus four is? One, and minus four plus four is? Zero, and then we get into negative numbers. This tells you which elements are gonna be selected. So ignoring this for right now, this over here tells you which elements are gonna be selected. The third element, the second element, and the first element. And so if it was, I don't know, what, like, 2n plus 2, then it would be, let's see, 4, and then 6, is that right, yep, yep. and then 8, 10, so it tells you the 4th element, the 6th, the 8th, and the 10th would be selected. So that's how that works. That makes sense. Makes sense. Going the other direction, like figuring out how to get to this, for me, is just trial and error, I'm just like, Try some combination and hope for the best. Um, okay, so the last group, after and before, the pseudo, these are called pseudo elements, actually, not just pseudo selectors, pseudo elements. I still have the last child. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So this selects the first element, which is the Cool, thank you. So uh, last child and last of type, they're exactly like nth child and nth of type, except you count from the end instead of from the beginning, but otherwise they're exactly the same. Um, okay, and now for the pseudo elements, uh, which group was that? There we go. Wow, what is that? Okay. I'm just putting something in here so we can see where the content is. Um, I'm going to give that. I'm actually going to give that div an outline. Sorry, not trying to hog your spotlight. I just want to. Oh, this whole thing is the outline, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. No, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. This this whole box. Awesome. Nice. Cool. Yeah, so before and after, they're called pseudo elements because they basically give you a fake element to deal with. So like, so on the very first uh, feedback we got for this class, someone said that I self-promote too much, so I apologize for that, but I'm doing it again. Um, <laughs> but on this site, so down here, like all of these images, these are all added in here with um, before, using the before element. And I just like create a fake element and give it a background image. Same thing that's going on with all of these. This is all done in CSS. These images aren't anywhere in the HTML. It's just all done with before and after. Okay, yeah, that was maybe a bit too much. Um, okay. Yeah, this is, so is the Nyan cat, I think. I don't know. I went back and 
added something to my website, and I was like, uh, there's got to be more than this. Um, this is how I have fun. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, questions about pseudo selectors or elements? Any of those? John, yeah. There's been like a lot of elegant things, been decoupling sort of different spheres of interest, and this so far seems to aggressively couple style with the HTML. Hmm. I, I disagree because we're not actually adding anything into the HTML. It's just all in the style itself. Oh, I'm sorry. Putting in images like I did on my site? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so like using, using before and after to like add big whole chunks of code into a website? Yeah, probably a little bit gnarly. Um, what it was originally designed for was things like, so Valentine, I'll... Um, Will you be my valentine? Actually, here, let me just make some paragraphs. Um, this is a question. This is another question. And then these were originally intended to let you be able to do things like P after, P after, and then put in content. There, and so I could add in a question mark that way. Or a better example would be like with block quotes. You could do block quote before and then content. I don't remember how I would write a, um, like a fancy swooshy quote, but you could put like a quotation mark in here. Um, so that's kind of chunky, but I'm gonna go that way for now. Block quote, this is a long quote. Show up, there it is, and then I'll also do block quote after. And now it's small and not very exciting, but this thing is now surrounded by quotes. And so that was a way of me being able to put in quotations around everything without having to actually write quotations around everything, which would be really annoying. So in the same way that, yeah, you probably shouldn't use CSS to like paint huge pictures, you probably shouldn't use before and after to put in like big crazy images, but you totally can. The functionality is there. Um, but this is more just like showing off what all you can do with it. Thinking more like the children just like being pretty dependent on the structure of the uh, Let's see. So can you give me an example? Because to my mind, everything we're doing with like nth child and everything is purely stylistic. I'm just thinking like you have something that's targeting an only child and someone adds a paragraph in there and all of a sudden CSS isn't showing up and that's a lot of digging, looking at HTML, looking back at CSS. That's true. And so as a result, things like empty and only child don't get used that much. Empty is used more when, uh, well, a lot of these are used for tables, actually. Um, so if you think about a table, you want to highlight the empty cells. That's where you might use empty. And then it doesn't matter if someone adds in a new cell, whatever. That doesn't really change the semantic meaning. You just want to be able to highlight all the empty cells. Um, only child and everything, that's a bit trickier. I can't think of only child. Eh. Um, I can't think of situations off the top of my head in which you would want to use that. But presumably they're there. I just can't think of any. But yeah, that's a really good point. Other questions about this stuff? No? Okay, so the more interesting thing I want to do is talk about forms. So forms are really annoying to style because you really can't style them. Pardon me while I close all these windows here. I guess that's fine. I haven't saved my pen. Hmm. Oh, I'm clicking stay on this page, aren't I? I could explain it. All right, so uh, here's an example. All right, let's take this thing, this really exciting website. Um, there's not really a way to style radio buttons. Like, let's say I wanted these radio buttons, I don't know, I want them to be like blue and have a solid background color. 
I can't really do that. I mean, I can do input type radio, and on some browsers, you can give them a border. Like in some browsers, I could do border five pixels of solid black, and that'll probably work on here. Um, no, that won't even work on here, really. That's interesting. Uh, that kind of surprises me. There we go. So I can give it an outline, but I can't even give it a border, which seems like a really big oversight in HTML and CSS. So the best solution is to not really even use radio buttons and checkboxes at all, or to do so, but to hide them. So for example, um, I might do something like this. So here I've got these labels. They're not doing anything right now. I'm going to hide these radio buttons. And I'm not going to use display none. That would be like the easy way to make them all go away. And that works fine. But there's a reason I can't do that. If you use display none on an input element, in some browsers, it won't even read the information from that input anymore. So if I have like display none on a text input or something, and then I submit the form, some browsers might not even read the value from that input element anymore. And that's kind of too bad. I just want to hide it. I still want to get the data from it. I just want to hide it. So one way you can do that is by doing this. I'm going to give this radio, every uh, radio button, a width of one pixel, a height of one pixel, an opacity of 0 0.01. Uh, let's see. How am I doing here? Okay, that is pretty good, but they're still taking up a little bit of room, and I don't want them to do that. So I'm going to give them a position of absolute as well. There, and now it's as if those didn't even exist. So now I can like click on each of these different things, and you can't see it, but it's actually checking those boxes. But there should still be some visual feedback to show that I'm like, you know, actually clicking on these things. So what I can do is say input type radio plus label. I'm actually going to add this in too. And then I'll break this down in just a second. Color red. And then when I start clicking on stuff, it shows you which one is selected. So what's going on in this selector here is, first, the easy part. I'm selecting every input with a type of radio. And if you haven't seen this before, you can actually put anything in here. I could do input name uh, country, and that would probably still select all of these. You could actually do input class equals and then the name of a class, but that's more work than you really need to do. But you can select any element by any of its attributes using this syntax right here. But for right now, I just want to select every input with a type of radio, and then I'm putting checked after it. So this is another pseudo selector that selects every uh, input that has been checked. After that comes this plus and then label. Plus label means select every label that comes immediately after the thing I put before it. So in this case, select every label that comes immediately after a radio button that has been checked. Select every label that comes immediately after a radio button that has been checked. And as a result, every radio button, they're still there, they're just hidden, but now I can highlight the labels and still show what's being selected without actually having to use radio buttons, which I can't style at all. Um, and you could do something even fancier like uh, label before display inline block. Uh, let's see, I'll do a width of 20 pixels, height 20 pixels, border, radius. I'm making a circle and I'm going to give it a background color of, I don't know, background color blue. Why not? I'm just going to scoot that down here and then I'm going to say, let's see, should have all this here as well. And then, okay, so if the radio button is not checked, I want the label to have a blue dot before it. If the radio button is checked, 
I want the label pseudo selector, a pseudo element to have a background color of red. And in this way, I should be able to emulate radio buttons. That works really well. Okay, so this isn't working, so I'm going to dig into the uh, element inspector and see if I can figure out why. Um, the way these things show up in the uh, inspector is, let's see, this label should have something. Well, I'll come back to that. If I just do plain old label before here and then do like, oh, I know what I forgot. Okay, so the thing about pseudo, uh, pseudo um, elements is they all have to have this content property. Doesn't matter what goes inside it, it could just be blank, but they all have to have a content property. Without it, it's not gonna work. This should work now. There we go, and so now I have these dots, and now when I select one, I've got that nice little radio button thing happening, which is pretty cool. Um, and in this way, I can, like, even more so, just have plain old radio buttons by removing all of the text in here, and then all I get are these little dots. And so now I have my own radio buttons. Really crappy radio buttons, but I have my own radio buttons. And I can do pretty much anything I want with these. I mean, again, I could give these background images, I could like, you know, make them spin, I could do any other CSS thing you can imagine to these. So this is how you make your own radio buttons. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, I will. But yeah, Walter. Um, so in the notes, I have overflow hidden on here because, well, let's see if I can, I wonder if I can get this to show up. I'm going to leave the opacity of one on these. See how these radio buttons are still there? They're really small, but they're still there. Um, in order to have them really be one pixel wide, you need to put overflow hidden on them. If the opacity is 0 0.01, it doesn't really matter because they're going to be super faint anyway. But if you want to be really thorough, then you need overflow hidden. What overflow hidden does, wow, it's apparently not much on here. So this must be another thing that varies from browser to browser. Um, but what overflow hidden does is if you have an image that's like wider than its parent container, if you put overflow hidden on the parent container, it says, don't let this image be wider than the parent container. Just clip off the image if it tries to be wider than its parent container. Um, on some browsers, this works better than others. Apparently in Chrome, it does not. Um, but that's just like a way of being really sure that those radio buttons aren't going to show up anyway. Does that answer your question? And Adrian? No. Oh, okay. Other questions about this? So whenever you go to any website and you see that they have radio buttons or whatever that are something other than the ones that come built in with your browser, anything other than this, they've done it using this method that we just went over. They did it using CSS and by hiding the radio buttons and instead using pseudo selectors, uh, pseudo elements to make their own. Cool? So you can do the same thing with uh, checkboxes. So I'll do like, sort of in an American theme today. So I'm gonna make an input with a type of checkbox and then I'm gonna give it proud to be an American. And then it's gonna have a label of label for proud to be an American. Uh, you are proud to be an American. And I'm just going to, uh, no, I'll just comment those out for now. Okay, so there's that. You're proud to be an American. And if I click on it, it's a label. So for some reason it's not selecting that checkbox, which probably means it spelled something. Say what? Oh, it didn't? Oh, look at that. My computer's just pokey. Cool. Um, 
So I can do a couple interesting things here. Um, I can do this, uh, input type checkbox plus label, and then I'm going to do after content, and then I'm going to say if it's checked, then put an exclamation mark after it. So now, if it's unchecked, it asks you are proud to be an American? And then if you check it, it says you are proud to be an American. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and just the way I did before, I can hide the checkbox. And give it a width of 1, a height of 1, uh, an opacity of 0.01. Position absolute just to make sure it really doesn't take up any room. And now the checkbox goes away, and I still get this awesome responsive website I got going on here, which I think is pretty cool. Questions about that? Yana? Yeah. Yes, the ID has to match, um, well, or four has to match the ID. So you say what? Uh, you don't want to use name. So if you just have one checkbox, then it may still work. But um, presumably, you're going to have multiple checkboxes that are all going to have. I don't know if there were different things you could check for proud to be an American. You have to give every checkbox or every radio button for a specific value. You have to give every option for a specific value the same name. So if you have multiple things with the same name, then the label's not going to know what to select. If you only have one, it'll still work. But otherwise, you need to have a different ID for each one. And that's how you're going to select each specific one. Does that make sense? Cool. Other questions about this? I think this is really fun, incidentally. Like, the first time I figured this out, I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then I was, like, making so much stuff. It was great. Nothing else? OK, cool. Um, so one more thing is drop downs. This is something I don't think we ever really went over, which is how to make a drop-down menu in uh, whatever this is, HTML. Um, and so they use the select element. That's going to be something like select name country. And then inside select, so if I just refresh the page now, I should get this awesome little drop-down menu right here that doesn't do anything. Excuse me. Um, but in here I can put option value USA, USA, option value GB, great retain, option, option value, uh, I don't know, Mars, Mars. And then when I refresh, I get this swanky little drop down menu, which is all very well. But this is another thing that you can't style yourself. Um, you can try to do whatever you want to this. On some browsers, you can make it bigger, and you can change the font, but that's about it. So if I decide, like, man, I don't like this little, like, crappy little gradient thing. I want to make this thing my own. You're actually going to use radio buttons the way we did before. Someone needs to eat some more fiber. Um, so I'm going to do something like UL class dropdown. I see it, I see it. And then close that, indent everything properly, and then I'm going to make a whole bunch of list items. So I'm just making a list of things right now, which by itself doesn't do a whole lot of good as a drop down menu. Yeah, that's not terribly exciting. Let me put these labels back in here. So, what? America. Um, England, Mother, Russia. Incidentally, fun fact, I learned in Indonesia that the uh, Indonesian word for pepper is mericha, but it's spelled merica. So like every, anytime I went to a restaurant, I would see merica staring back at me, and that was like very patriotic. <clears throat> okay, so making a drop-down menu, I'm going to do... Um, <laughs> Christ. 
Whatever. Okay, I'm gonna give this thing. Let's see. Well, first off, I'm gonna put some sort of a like some sort of a label in it. This is a drop down or a drop and down menu in this case. Okay, so there is my drop down menu. I'm going to say uh, li not. Right, what would be the best way to do this? You know what? I'm actually not going to use. I'm just going to make this a div. I'm actually not going to use li's. I'm just going to use plain old inputs and labels. I'll come back to this one. Okay, so this is just a div with a whole bunch of inputs and labels in it. I'm going to say uh, input, same thing I did before. Input type radio, blah, 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 one, capacity 0.1, uh, position absolute. Okay, so those are out of the way. Now I'm going to make all of the labels blocks. So display block, and I'm going to give them all a width of, I don't know, 200 pixels. And then a border of one pixel of solid red. What do we have so far? All right, so now I have the labels stacked on top of each other. That's pretty good. I'm going to make them wider. And then I'm going to give this thing with the class of dropdown, I'm going to give it an outline of like one pixel of solid blue. Okay, now I'm going to say label display none. Labels don't actually hold any information themselves. So I can say display none on a label, and that's fine. But I'm also going to say uh, input type radio checked plus label display block and drop down um, actually I'm gonna do two different things sorry I'm thinking of all these like little stylistic things I want to change I'm gonna do drop down on hover then I want the labels to show up so let's make this work okay so this is my drop down menu and then when I hover over it nothing happens well that's not very exciting why is that? It might be the drop down doesn't have any height right now, so I'm going to give it like a minimum height of, I don't know, 10 pixels or something. And now, when I hover over it, there we go. So now I've got this dinky little drop down menu happening over here. Um, still not very exciting, um, but I can make it look a little bit better. I can do something like uh, input type radio checked plus label background color red. I'll do orange. I'll mix it up. And now if I go back here, when I click on one, and there we go. This is a really ugly drop down menu. Um, so if I wanted to unsuck this a little bit, I would do it by, let's see, I'm going to give both the drop down and the label a width of 300 pixels and a height of 36 pixels. And now, oh, and Drop down shouldn't be collapsing in on itself. I wonder why it is. Sorry? Oh, you got it. Thank you. There we go. And now I can do all that. Um, make it even a little bit more interesting. Label, hover. Background color uh, FDB. Not sure what that is, but it's probably some sort of a like nice reddish hair. Now, if it's actually selected, now I got that going on. Um, and I'm going to get rid of that ugly blue outline. I feel like Bob Ross. Happy little trees. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to do this whole thing, border. And then I'm going to say, okay, every label, I want you to have a border on your bottom of one pixel solid CCC. And then I'll make this a nicer color like 369, a nice navy blue. There you go. Well, I still have some work I need to do on the borders, but I hope you guys can sort of see what I'm going for on here. Um, it would be a lot nicer if there was something that sort of showed up in here by default, so I don't just have this bare rectangle hanging out. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to have a label that doesn't link to anything, but it just stays there. How about country? And then I'm going to say drop down label not uh, not first of type. Now country is always there. And now I can hover over it and everything shows up. And there we go. Questions about that? And I mean, I could totally make this a lot prettier, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, so that's drop-down menus. Um, any questions? That's all I wanted to talk about with respect to form stuff. Any other questions about that? Yeah, I will. Um, the very last thing is pagination. So imagine, if you will, oh, I forgot about that UL down there. Oh, well. Uh, I'm going to give this page a couple different sections. ID section 1. This is my favorite section. Div ID section 2. This is my second favorite section. I'm actually not going to send out the code for this thing specifically because there's an exercise that has all the solution code in it, and I'm just going to slack that out instead. Um, and it's a much more attractive version. This is my third favorite section. Okay, so now I've got all these sections on here. That's all very nice. I'm going to make each section the size of the whole window. So width 100%, height 100%, seem to do much. Oh, that's because my HTML and my body also need a width and a height. There we go. Okay, so now I have three sections on top of each other. Not terribly exciting. Um, but I can use that target attribute to make it so that every div by default is uh, hidden, so display none, but every div that is targeted is then displayed. And so what this lets me do is this. So nothing is shown right now, but if I put pound section one over here, still nothing happens. Oh, thank you. Good catch. There you go. So there's my favorite section, here's my second favorite section, and here's my third favorite section. This is the beginnings of something really, really nice. I don't have to use JavaScript to make it look like I have multiple pages on one page. I can just use CSS. And anytime I'm given the option between using CSS and using JavaScript, I'm totally going to use CSS because it's so much easier. So I can make it look like I have an infinite number of pages on this one page just by doing this. It's not very helpful if the user has to go in and type section one up here. So I'm going to give them a little navigation bar to help them do that. Let's see, nav, ul, uh, a, 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 href, pound, section one, section one. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other sections. Two, section three. And then, there we go. And I'll turn this into sort of a like navigation bar thing across the top. Um, I'm going to like fix it. Top zero, left zero, background, color blue, color 
white. And I'll put it on the right, actually. Otherwise, it'll be over this text. Okay, there we go. Wow, that is impossible to see. Okay, so I'll do orange. Okay, so now when I click on this, that section opens up, and that section, and then that section. So this is how most like navigation bars happen on pages. And again, if you don't want to do JavaScript, you don't have to. You can do everything just with CSS, just like this. This is how I make the vast majority of my websites, just using this exact same thing. And like, sorry, I'm really excited about not having to use JavaScript because who wants to use JavaScript, like seriously. Um, cool, so there's that. So we've gone over radio buttons, check boxes, drop down menus, and this sort of like pseudo pagination thing going on here. Any questions about that? Yes? Can this do that and link to another uh, HTML file? So let's say it's a large amount of information and you don't want to have it within your regular HTML document. Yeah, sure. So if I go like, here, I'll just copy this and then I'll <laughs> open up like an incognito window and just paste this in here and then yeah, section one shows up. And if I go to hashtag section two, section two shows up. If you go to any GitHub page um, and you hover over one of these headers over here, you see how it has this little like paperclip thing over here on the left, these little links? If I click on that, then you can see that it adds a hash and a whole bunch of stuff at the end too. This is a way of being able to share like a really long doc piece, uh, piece of documentation then it'll jump to a specific section in the documentation. A uh, more interesting CSS-y example is on Stack Overflow. Uh, where is the documentation page for active record data types? I don't know. Right here, apparently. Um, if I click this little share button down here, gives me this link. And then, okay, which in turn turns into this link. And if you look up here, it has this little pound sign at the top again. So it's got another one of those little poundy things. So if I go to this link in any browser, it uses CSS to make it flash orange when you jump down to it. Flash. There we go. So it does that. Cool, so that's just using this target selector that we just talked about. That's exactly how they're doing that. Target and a transition or an animation or something, I guess. Questions about that? No? Cool. Okay, well, that's pretty much all I have for class today. So, um, your homework for tonight is to make this thing on this thing. It's that cat thing I showed earlier. Uh, git checkout solution from index.html. OK, it's to make this page, um, which has different sections within it. If I click on this, it shows the happy cats, uh, and the grumpy cats, and the sleepy cats. And it also has a uh, drop-down menu with radio buttons inside it. It doesn't actually do anything, but it's there anyway, just to have some practice on it. What you guys are going to do is you are given this. Well, let me just refresh this now. You are given this, where the pages haven't been hidden yet, so you're going to have to use that target selector to pick the one you want. Uh, and you're going to have to make this drop-down menu look drop-downy. Um, but aside from that, all the HTML and CSS has been given for you. You just add on a little bit to the end of the CSS. Um, so that's your homework for tonight. Any questions about that? I really hope this doesn't take too long because well, I just really hope this doesn't take too long. Questions? Concerns? Comments? Okay, so I'll slack that out and then you guys are on your own. We are going to begin uh, reviews with the groups on projects in 
Let's see. I think it is at four. I will double check. It's probably in here. Jesse speaks. He says, yep, 4 p.m. Okay, so we're going to be, unless you are otherwise di uh, directed, uh, you'll be meeting at 4 p.m. Um, that is half the groups, obviously. The other half will be meeting tomorrow at 4. Um, again, unless you're otherwise directed. I think some of you guys are meeting on Friday. Uh, but feel free to look at that thing. That's just the groups.md file in uh, the Project 3 repo, which Jesse slacked out again there. Okay. That's all I got. Let me select this out. Oh, I just linked to localhost. Oh my god, that's embarrassing. Okay. GitHub.com. I... Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll dig that up, and when I find it, I'll slack it out. It's really pretty fun. Cat. Fancy. There it is. I'm just going to casually edit that. Rookie mistake. Okay, cool. Now we're done.